Antalet fall av borrelia har ökat kraftigt de senaste åren och det är tack med att testningarna... Så till Haiti där 2000 människor nu har dött i koleraepidemin för att kunna rädda fler... Under augusti insjuknade ett barn om dagen av e-äggbakterien. Totalt drabbades... The mention of the word bacteria triggers a sense of warning in most of us. For disease and in the worst cases even death. But for Steve Anderson, bacteria is something entirely different. Of all of the billions of bacteria found on Earth, there are only a relative fraction of them that cause disease. Most bacteria live in symbiosis with us and even produce substances which are vital to their hosts. This is why Steve is mapping the genome of the so-called good bacteria. Her goal is to make it possible for scientists in the future to design new good bacteria, which can produce substances that cure diseases or build up our immune systems to protect us against infections. And unlike many other medications, these would be here for a whole lifetime. The great thing about bacteria is that they are alive and as long as they live together with the human body and produce their particular compound, the vaccine or the medicine, then it will be produced. So in principle, the medicine could be produced for the entire lifetime of a human being. But to do this, Sieve has to start with the mapping of all the genes of the good bacteria. It's here at Uppsala University where she has her base where she is leading the world in this field. But 20 years ago, these successes felt remote. Sieve says that her research was at a standstill, but she must have done something right, because when she was at a lecture presenting her research, she was approached afterwards by Craig Venter, a pioneer in mapping the human genome. He was impressed and invited Sieve to take part in a conference in the United States. Since this was the first time I was uh, invited to speak at such a big conference with a really large audience, I got very nervous as I stood there talking. And then I promised, I said that I'm, at the next conference, which was in less than half, half a year, uh, we will have completed this genome. As soon as I said that, I regretted that I had said it. And especially when I came home to my group and I had to tell them that, oops, uh, I, I'm sorry, but I promised that we should finish this until the next conference. And luckily, we just managed to complete it until the next conference. It was very demanding and stressful work, but she proved that her impossible goal was in fact possible. And at the next conference, Sieve presented the genome of a whole bacterium, the typhus bacterium. It was one of the first 20 organisms in the world that had been fully mapped and the first ever in Sweden. And this work was published in Nature. And here we have the front cover of that article. And there they put on the front a louse. And this is because the typhus pathogen is transmitted by lice. A bacteria's only task is to survive. And for at least three and a half million years since they have existed on Earth, they have managed to find different survival strategies. Some live on almost nothing in the most hostile environments, while others become part of their hosts. Insects, animals, or humans, they create substances which are vital to their hosts and in this way have made themselves indispensable. Without our bacteria, we would not survive. Now we go to lab. Sieve wants to understand how this has come to be to understand which genes in the bacterial genome make it possible to produce materials in consort with the host body. A knowledge that can provide completely new possibilities in medicine and drug development. And it all starts in the lab. So here in this cupboard, we grow the bacteria. And normally it's very difficult to grow bacteria because maybe Overall, only 1% of all bacteria that is out there in nature is possible to grow in the laboratory. And this is particularly true for the bacteria that we work with that um, live inside hosts, insects and higher animals, since they are so well adapted to their hosts that they cannot really grow outside of the host. So this is one example of a bacterium that we managed to grow. In Sieve's lab, the bacterial DNA is sequenced. 
Today, this is done in about half a day. When sieves started, it could have taken years. Instead, the big challenge now relies on machines converting this vast amount of information into a layout of the DNA structure, the genes, and the order in which they're placed. Several millions of letters and numbers must be analyzed and coded. So here we have now all of our interesting bacteria after they have the DNA sequences have come out from the machines. Daniel is analyzing now lactobacillus, from, which have been isolated from the honey stomach of honeybees from all over the world. Once a bacteria's genome is mapped, it's compared with the genetic makeup of other bacteria, so that researchers can find the unique characteristics of each one. This is the road to C's vision. If one day someone from the pharmaceutical industry knocks on my door and asks what it takes to make a bacterium that could make this particular vaccine or medicine or a nutrient, then I would be able to say, oh, then we should take these genes and combine them with this set of genes, put on a regulatory system and uh, order them in this way, and then you will have get a bacterium that performs exactly the tasks that you are asking for. We are really like detectives. We get small clues, little pieces of information here and there, and uh, then we try to put all of those pieces of information to draw a conclusion about something important. Now Sieve is building up her gene bank, consisting of unique genes, each with different properties. With these, she'll be able to combine and assemble different sequences to give bacteria new operating instructions, which will redefine its function. The new genome can then be inserted into a bacteria, causing it to act a certain way and produce the desired material. A person with diabetes, for example, would be helped by a bacteria that produces insulin, while those living among malaria-carrying mosquitoes could stay healthy with bacteria that fights malaria. And her vision is not so far away. This same technology is already being used for the preparation of new medicines. Sieve's quest for the right genes is constantly moving forward, and the time to the creation of these new drugs is getting closer. Technologically, we have almost all the pieces in place already, so I think that it would probably be possible to have a living medicine already in 15 to 20 years. So in the future, perhaps we'll see an end to stuffing ourselves full of pills every day or getting vaccinated several times in our lives. It may be sufficient to merely get a bacteria placed in the part of the body we want to affect and let the bacteria do the heavy lifting. Maybe then our view of bacteria will become something entirely different as well. <laughs>